Amelia Earhart is known as one of America's greatest female aviators, however, she did not get that title freely. She faced many difficulties throughout her life, including struggling with family and sexism blocking her from her goals, however, she never failed to shock those who doubted her. She was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24th, 1897 to Samuel and Amelia Earhart. However, growing up, her father's alcoholism didn't improve, so her mother sent her and her sister Grace to go live with her grandparents. She was reunited with her family by the age of 10, but her father failed to maintain a steady job, so they moved around a lot. Luckily, her and her sister were very close and would go on small adventures together. In school, she excelled in science and sports, but didn't have very many friends other than her sister. After graduating high school, she went up to Canada to visit her sister, and after seeing all the wounded World War I soldiers, she began to volunteer for the Red Cross. While volunteering, she began to know many of the pilots' stories and she began to have a very deep respect for aviators. In 1919, she began attending Columbia University, but soon dropped out to reunite with her family in California. In 1920, she went to Long Island Beach and took a short 10-minute plane ride. However, that event changed her life. She said that, once she got two to 300 feet off the ground, she knew she had to fly. Six months after starting her pilot lessons, she purchased her first plane. It was a bright yellow secondhand biplane that she named the Canary. In 1924, her parents got divorced and she had to sell her plane. A year later, she started to attend the University of Columbia, but had to drop out because of financial issues. Her interest in becoming a pilot never really went away. And in 1927, she became a member of the American Aeronautical Society in Boston. Over the years, her fame constantly grew, and the press named her Lady Lindy. She strove to become an example of courage, intelligence, and self-reliance for everybody around her, and constantly sought out ways to improve herself. She was a very accomplished woman during her time, and she always sought to face things on head first with a smile on her face. One of her first major accomplishments as a pilot was in October 1922 when she achieved the world altitude record for women pilots reaching 14,000 feet. However, she did not stop there. In April 1928, Earhart got an unexpected phone call asking if she wanted to be the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. However, only to make the flight as a passenger, as soon as she landed, she told herself that she would do it on her own one day. Earhart became involved with the 99s an organization of all female pilots who wanted to inspire other women and young girls to pursue aviation. In 1930, she became the organization's first president. In 1931, Earhart powered a Pitt Cairn PCA-2 auto gyro and set the world altitude record of 18,415 feet. She also won the title of being the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean by herself. On May 20th, 1932, she made a 15-hour flight from Harbor Grace, Newfoundland to Colmar, Northern Ireland. Two days after landing, Earhart made an appearance in Hansworth Airfield in London. Her flight made her known as an international hero. Due to all of her accomplishments, she earned many honors, one of them being the gold medal for National Geographic Society given to her by President Hoover, the Distinguished Flying Cross given by the U.S. Congress, and the Cross of the Knight of the Legion of Honor given by the French government. She has inspired many, many generations of women to do things that were thought impossible to do, especially by women. However, on July 2nd, 1937, Amelia Earhart would take her final flight. She wanted to be the first person in the world to circumnavigate the Earth by the equator. This flight caused her disappearance soon after she lost communication with land. After losing contact, President Roosevelt set up a $4 million search party to find Earhart and her navigator, Fred Noonan. However, nothing came up from it and their deaths are still a mystery. On January 5, 1939, Earhart was declared legally dead by the Superior Court in Los Angeles. However, she still continues to inspire many generations of women and men to pursue things they never thought possible.